Hey, welcome back, my fellow humble investor. It's me, E.T., and remember, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not your financial advisor. I'm just a self-taught investor who likes to talk about companies, in particular, humble. All right, last week was a busy week, a lot of stuff happening, and that's what we want to discuss. We're going to see exactly what happened last week, and also we've got some earnings. So let's take a look at some of those numbers and see if we can establish some type of baseline to go forward from here. So let's take a look. All right, let's take a look at the happenings. What happened last week? Right off the bat there, we're going to start with George Sharp resign as the uh, counsel and consultant to Humble. He designed because uh, he felt that over the course of the last nine weeks, uh, some of the moves that were made, the announcements and the operation and so forth, he didn't agree with. The, uh, evidently, he wasn't consulted, to, he didn't, didn't give his advice. And uh, so he, he's parting ways with Humble as the consultant. Uh, he's still gonna have a lion's share of warrants that's out there that's going to turn into stocks. He says that he still believes in, 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 in Humble. He thinks of Brian Foote as, as the Elon Musk uh, of uh, blockchain. So he's still positive and, and feels good about the direction that the company is going. Then we had a Hindenburg article where really it was a, a short attack. That's all that was. Uh, the article came out, it talked about stuff that, first of all, we already knew about. We, we talked about the, the B shares. He talked about the, the 2020 uh, financial report, uh, the, the, the end of the year financial report, which we knew there was no revenue or anything else like that. Then he started talking about, he went into the, uh, the numbers that came out on the earnings report. Um, Really, everything that he said was uh, definitely a negative. He was trying to cut down the confidence of the shareholders of Humble. And at the very end of his article, which in my opinion should have been at the very beginning of the article, he stated that they were shorting, they were short on Humble. So they're shorting the stock. So, eh, it, 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 we knew why the article was written the way it was written based upon them shorting the stock. That's going to be all part of that short attack that's been going on with the Humble. If you've been looking at the short uh, volume ratio, you know, we've been above 50% for quite some time. And anytime you start hanging out above that 50%, there's, you know, you're going to have days and weeks like we've had. So a short attack. But if you notice on Friday, there was kind of a short squeeze going on there for a minute because the price dropped and all of a sudden you've seen this huge spike up there. So somewhat of a short squeeze. And if you guys don't know, <coughs> when you short a stock, you're borrowing the stock from somebody, turning around and selling it, creating downward pressure on, on, on the price of the stock. <coughs> As more and more people start to sell, what you'll end up doing in order to close out the, what a shorter would have to do in order to close out the position is buy it back and they keep the difference. If they sell it at 10, you know, when they borrow the stock and they, and they, and they uh, buy it back at five, the difference is five, they get to keep, that's what they get to keep. On a short squeeze, basically what happens is uh, short is trying to do that, borrow stock, sell it and try to drive down the price of the stock. But the buyers are out there just buying up the stock and as the price goes up, the short is being squeezed. It can get to the point, let's say a shorter comes in and sells it at uh, 10 cents, hoping to go down to five to close out the position and make five. Let's say it goes up 15. Now the pressure is on him. He's got to close out his position. And if it continues to go up, more money he loses. So what happens after a certain point, they'll sell for a loss. And that's pretty much what we've seen uh, somewhat on Friday. We'll take a look at that when we look at the, uh, the price action for last week. Uh, also, what's been going on is within the OTC, the overall market in general, the market. 
when it comes to EV SPACs and growth has been really taking a hit. You know, there's been a rotation from the growth over to, um, to your value stocks. And one of the, the main reasons why is because of the threat of inflation. So with that, the may, some of these major sectors, growth sectors, tech sectors within the market have been hit. And with that, also, we've had a lot of downward pressure on the OTC market as well. So with a combination of all of this, yes, you know, we, we, we're, it's, it's, it's a perfect storm uh, to drive down the price of our stock. Now, what happened also last week, we had the first quarter earnings actually came out and we'll go over that when I get to this side of the board. And then also Brian Foote tweeted that uh, there is going to be a, a soft rollout of the NFT gallery. I believe that happened on Friday. So let's take a look over here. I've all, I, I have always said that once the numbers start appearing at that particular point, the numbers are going to dictate everything with me. All right. We can establish some baselines and we can start looking at some baselines within the earnings report for the first quarter. Uh, one of the things they noticed, they noted uh, information that was not related to the first quarter. They related it noted some information that was actually happened within the first six weeks of the second quarter. And that was from the 1st of April to the 16th of May. What they noted there was that during this time period, 75, uh, 7,500 were added to new customers were added to the humble financials. All right. For the mobile app, they got 30, uh, 30,000 active users and 13,000 merchants. And also they said that they have uh, $4.5 million in cash. Now the actual earnings report, these are some of the baselines that I'm looking at. This here is definitely baseline. You know, we know 75, how much more are we going to grow from, from 75 on a quarterly basis? All right. How much now are active users and merchants are going to grow? We're going to definitely keep an eye on the cash, that cash flow. We've got to have some cash uh, to make things to continue operation of the company. Now, when it comes to the earnings, some of the baselines that I'm really going to be focusing in on quarter after quarter after quarter after quarter is the first quarter of the revenue was $156,260. All right. Low number. But guess what? We have revenue. We have a baseline. Next quarter. Let's see how much have we grown from 156 to whatever the number is going to be. All right. Within the first quarter, this is how it breaks out. We had humble pay generate zero goose egg. We had uh, humble uh, merchant uh, marketplace. That's where the bulk of the, the revenue came from. That was 154,104 bucks. And the rest came from humble financials, which was 2,156 bucks. Bottom line, these are our baselines now. We can say, okay, next quarter, we should see a tremendous growth from revenue. I mean, imagine, let's just say a half a million dollars in revenue. Look at the growth from 156 to a half a million dollars quarter from quarter, quarter over quarter. So that's what this is going to do for me. This is now giving me a baseline to to evaluate the progress of the company as we move forward. And the net losses was $1.4 million. All right. So that was the happenings. We got some baselines that we can start looking at. And based upon those uh, baselines, we can all start looking at uh, establishing our own various types of metrics to really judge the financial, do a financial analysis of the company as we move forward. And as I always say, financial uh, analysis tell us what to buy. Technical analysis tell us when to buy and when to sell. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at um, the price action for last week, uh, my current position in Humbo, and some other information I don't want to share with you. So let's go to the slides. Hey, Humble Nation, I need you guys to do me a really big favor. Make sure that you hit that like, subscribe, and notification buttons. That'll really help out the channel. Thanks a lot. Okay, let's get to it. 
This here is a letter from George Sharp, uh, his uh, letter resig resignation. If you guys want to take a look at that, uh, you can either pause it here or I'll have a link of this letter in the description. This here is just that 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 bottom portion. I just put a, a clip it of uh, of that Hindenburg research, where they uh, pretty much uh, kind of dogged out uh, humble. But if you look at the end <laughs> disclosure, we are short shares of humble. <laughs> no wonder everything that you reported on and looked at it and wrote about was. Uh, Definitely biased. All right, this is a uh, a tweet from um, Brian Foote concerning the NFT gallery, and this here is one that I went to the website, went to the NFT gallery, pulled this up, looked at the, the various pictures. What they have right now are, are photos on there, and I pulled this one up of Kim Kardashian. That uh, the current bid is five thousand fifty bucks, or two point six Ethereum's. And when I pulled this up, it had two days, nine hours, and fifty eight minutes left before the end of the auction. And if you look here, it shows that the reserve price has been met. So evidently, I guess the next price you can bid on is five thousand seventy bucks. Uh, and it tells you who it's sold by. It's sold by Humble NFT Galleries. Also, you it'll state in a, the the actual description of the of, of the photo that um, this photo has not been released to the public. So uh, I went and looked at the other photos that they had in there. You, they had some where the reserve price has been met, but they still had days before the end of the auction. And you also have some where the price wasn't met, but uh, it's getting pretty close. And at the rate that it was going, chances are all of the photos there uh, by the end of the auction will probably either be at the reserve price or above that. So this possibly could be a huge cash cow for for humble we'll see i just wanted to point this out when it comes to this nft since it was launched on friday all right this here is a um a merchant who uh wrote a comment about the transaction fees for humble compared to his other his other <laughs> his other <laughs> vendors uh his other uh uh, uh, platforms that it was using for payment. And this is pretty cool. Um, let's see. He was saying that if he had ran, it was a $400 transaction. If he ran the same transaction, uh, my total receive would have been uh, $385 after fees. Humble saved him $14.35 on that transaction. If that is definitely the case, um, as more and more merchants discover the the low fee for humble, uh, I think this will will start to take off, and uh, you'll see this start to grow. Um, it's very possible humble could end up being uh, what uh, Robinhood was for the. Uh, uh, the various type of brokerage platforms there. In other words, a total disruptor. We'll see. I just wanted to share this with you. All right. This here is the, the statement that's in the uh, first quarter earnings. They pretty much uh, talked about the first six weeks of the second quarter. They just wanted to put those numbers out there so far as that they added 7,500 customers to uh, Humble Financial. Um 35,000 downloads with over 30,000 active users, 13,000 merchant accounts, and it talks about the $4.5 million in cash. Okay, this one here is the humble security details. Uh, this is just letting us know, just keeping us aware of the total authorized shares the current outstanding shares. We're gonna keep an eye on that just to see, just to see whether or not um, the outstanding shares are 
uh, are increasing from the uh, 895 million shares that's over here. This here is the uh, price action on Friday. It uh, opened at 77 cents and closed at 83 cents at 9% uh, move. Uh, here's where I was talking about it looks like there was some type of short squeeze going on. However, you know, in order for really for this to, to work and really have some, some impact, it has to be sustained. Uh, I mean, I'm talking about just look at what happened with GameStop. It was sustained over, actually still going on over some weeks. So that's what we're going to need. We're going to need something that's going to last a lot longer than just, uh, you know, a couple of hours on a trading day. Look at the volume, you know, the 10 day average is 14 million. We're at 22 million. Trend line for the week is definitely, well, we already know it was, is still declining. This here is a cop that uh, is the comparison of, of Humboldt and Fort Lee. One of the reasons why you're looking at uh, it, the chart is not similar. And if you notice in the past, they were, they, they were, they were tracking almost exactly. And the reason why is because Fort Lee is getting to the point where it doesn't have that much more room to go. So when you get that, things start to run flat. I mean, you can only go to zero. It's at 14 cents. So that's why I, I, you see a difference now in the chart patterns there. This here is the, uh, the short volume ratio report. On Friday, the short volume was at at thirty nine percent, which was low. If you notice, I drew this uh, this line at fifty percent, and the days that were at fifty percent, you you don't want that volume to be above fifty percent. So you have more selling going on than buying. So uh, definitely want to keep a watch on this one here. This here shows uh, the most search stock within the last 72 hours. Humble has you know, been number one or number two for about the last four to five weeks. However, I don't think that's a good thing because I think that's where a lot of the, uh, the people that are shorting get their information from. What's popular out there, tracking it this way, then, then, then targeting short attacks for companies listed here. That's just, I may be completely wrong on that, but... Um, think about it as, as, as much as we've been on, uh, on the short attacks, uh, we've also been either number one or number two when it comes to the most search stocks. This is my current position. As you can see, I'm down 66% in Humble and down 56% in Forwardly. Um, uh, Bottom line, my conviction is still there. As I was saying, I will continue to nibble. As you can see, I definitely nibbled last week, uh, 17th, 19th, and 20th, uh, I bought Humble. And then on the 17th, I bought some for at least. This here is um, the account summary for my Humble Financial ETX. I'm in block three and five started on the 29th of April. And if you look, <coughs> my cost basis, my current value is definitely lower than my cost basis. And if you look at this next slide, <coughs> I am, <coughs> excuse me, I am down 22%. Uh, started off with a thousand bucks, you know, went up to about 1200 bucks. Now that thousand bucks is only worth $781.87, down 22%. Um, a lot of that has to do with what happened with the crypto cryptocurrencies last week. If, you know, the leader of uh, all cryptocurrency is going to be Bitcoin. And Bitcoin definitely took a dive last week. All right, guys, as you can see, um, overall, uh, um, you know, I am, I'm drastically down when it comes to Humble and Fortly. However, I think that's just going to be a temporary bump. I'm not in it for the short term. I'm in it for the long term anyway. Um, but also, if you look, that you're right, I'm down about like 22% when it comes to my ETX uh, in the Humble Financials. That doesn't bother me because the overall crypto market took a dive last week, as well as 
Humble, some of the OTC stocks. So I'm not worried about that. That's a, an experiment for me, so we'll see how that, this plays out within the next few weeks. Uh, I'll do another video, I'll release another video probably Monday or Tuesday that really is going to go a little bit uh, further in depth into the, my, my crypto investment experience with the Humble ETX and also with some other platforms that I'm looking at as well. So go ahead and check out those videos. With all that said, guys, hey, I will see you next Sunday, if not sooner. Take care. Bye-bye.